Hey what's up guys, OSG here and this time we'll be looking at games that I would say were better on the C64 than they were on the Amiga. There's no doubt that both these Commodore machines were great, but some games were just that little bit better on the 8-bit. Obviously we aren't talking graphics here, as the Amiga would wipe the floor with a C64 in that respect, but as I have found through my 35 years of gaming, that a game isn't always about looks. You need good gameplay and great music too. And when you have those two things, the graphics aren't as important as you think. This is a list of 17 games that in my opinion are better overall than the Amiga versions. First up we have Armalite on the Amiga. Now the Amiga had some great shoot 'em ups and this game could have been great like it was on the C64, but it's nowhere near as good. It's mostly down to it being too hard. The Commodore 64 version is second on my C64 best shoot 'em ups list and is a great looking game that plays as smooth as butter. The difficulty while still being hard is just right for the avid shoot 'em up fan. Arnie for the Amiga is next. I'm not sure which version came first or why they choose two different perspectives on how the game looks, but this one for me is definitely the weakest one. It's kind of a Green Beret wannabe that just doesn't do anything for me. The C64 version is much better, in a commando or who dares wins type view. The game itself is short, but it's a lot of fun to play. Definitely one I would play if I had to choose between the two. Next up is Bionic Commando, and for a system that was renowned for knocking out some of the best arcade platform conversions, this is a really poor attempt. The scrolling on this game is one of the worst I've seen on the Amiga, and from there on in, the game is crap. The C64 version of Bionic Commando does everything right. The game even looks good too, and that music is awesome. This is one of the best arcade conversions on the C64, and is a lot of fun to play. Commando on the Amiga is a really good conversion of the arcade game, but falls foul to the trap of making an already hard game even harder. In fact, too hard. I love the arcade looks, but for me the gameplay is killed by the difficulty level. The Commodore 64 version, while not being completely true to the arcade, is still a great game and probably is the best run and gun game on the system. This is even better now that the full game has recently been released with all the arcade levels, but what really makes this game great is the Rob Hubbard soundtrack.
Creatures was a game that was released on the C64 near the end of its retail life. The Amiga version was released three years later by Thalamus, and although it's a good game, it's not up to the standard of the C64. Maybe that's because we would expect more from the Amiga. The C64 version is renowned for being a near perfectly made game. As I said it was towards the end of the C64's life and the developers had really got a hold on what they could squeeze out of the system and man they really squeezed the life out of it with this game. Cue the part where everyone says, no way, cause now we have Defender of the Crown on the Amiga. I'm not saying that this game is in any way crap, it's aesthetically beautiful and is definitely one of the best Amiga games ever made, but it's unfinished as far as gameplay goes. That will be explained more in the C64 version. The C64 version has a greater variety in regards of gameplay. It has more random events, more siege and battle options. You also can pass a turn. Buying an army on the C64 takes a turn while it doesn't on the Amiga. Because of this I think the game is more challenging but ultimately more fun to play. Hawkeye on the Amiga is next, and this one doesn't even beat the C64 on graphics in my view. Yeah, it's a little bit sharper, but that is it. The music is rubbish and the gameplay is nowhere near as good as it is on the 8-bit. The C64 version, while not being one of my favourite games, is still a solid platformer with one of the best seed soundtracks ever by Jerome Tell. Thalamus really knew how to make a full package game on the C64. Hudson Hawk on the Amiga is not a bad game. It looks great and the music is okay too, but it has one fundamental problem. The controls are horrible. Well at least they can be, unless you get used to them. The Commodore 64 version is maybe the best film based game on the system. It looks nice, yeah not as nice as the Amiga and there is no music either. So how is this better I hear you say? One word, gameplay. And this version gets everything right in that department. Next we have Catechus on the Amiga, and this game was surrounded by controversy due to its uncanny likeness to R-Type. Unfortunately, it's nowhere near as good as either R-Type or its 8-bit counterpart.
Strategist on the C64 is my number one game on the best C64 shooting ups video. It's as good a shoot em up as you can get on any system and that's a bold statement given how many there are. But if you play this you will find I speak the truth. It's perfection and the Chris Hoofbeck music is the cherry on the cake. <laughs> Micro Pro Soccer on the Amiga wasn't the best football game on the system. We all know that was Sensible World of Soccer, or maybe Kick Off 2. But as I say, this isn't the worst game, but it will never live up to how good a game it was on the C64. This is without a doubt the best football game on the C64. The game flows great and really looks nice for an 8-bit machine. I can vividly remember playing the life out of this with my mates and we all loved it. Here we have Myth, History in the Making for the Omega. I actually did a video a while back asking which was better and the C64 came out on top, by a mile actually. While this pisses all over the C64 graphics wise, it lacks the atmosphere that that game has. The C64 game is one of my favourite go to games, I never get tired of playing it and recently done a long play on my channel. For an epic game this looks great and also plays great, oh and the intro music is outstanding. Now I don't think I have to go too far into this, Outrun on the Omega was maybe the biggest pile of tripe that US Gold ever made. Apart from the overhyped intro, the game was just a steaming pile of horse manure. End of. The C64 version, while not being perfect, is a marked improvement on the Amiga game, in respect of the fact that it's playable, sounds great and to be honest, doesn't look bad either. I know this game isn't for everyone, but I like it, and there's no denying that it's better than the terrible Amiga port. This is the Amiga version of Platoon. This game tried to enhance the classic C64 game but failed on a grand scale. Its biggest fall down was the difficulty level was off the map. I mean the C64 version is hard enough, but this makes even that game look easy. On top of that, for a 16-bit machine, I think it could have looked and sounded a lot better. Commodore 64 game is the first game I ever played on the C64, and what a game to fire up. From the off, the music is perfect for the game, and the graphics and sound are some of the best that we have ever seen on the system.
This is a masterclass on how to get everything wrong but the graphics and it's Power Drift on the Amiga. Power Drift was a super popular arcade game and I bet that the screenshots from the Amiga sold a load of copies of this game. Unluckily for the ones who bought it, though, it was one of the worst car games ever made for the Amiga. The Commodore 64 version didn't try to be ambitious and simply knocked out a decent racing game that resembled the great arcade game. The graphics are nice and the sense of speed is there. The music also adds a lot to this port too. Last Ninja 2 on the Amiga had some massive shoes to fill when porting the game from the C64. While it's not the worst game I've played, it's certainly not a patch on the C64 classic, it just lacks that magic that the System 3 produced on the 8-bit. The Commodore 64 version is a work of art, finished off with one of the best soundtracks on the system. The gameplay, while still a bit fiddly, is a marked improvement on the first game and you hardly notice the control problems once you settle into the game. Some games are all about the feeling you get when you play them and this is definitely one of those games. Another movie tie-in here from Ocean, and it's the Untouchables on the Amiga. I don't know what they were thinking of with the music on this, it's just all wrong for the game and the gameplay is sluggish and really annoying. The Commodore 64 version got everything right, nice fast gameplay, music that really suits the era of the game and the graphics that could be passed off as 16-bit. Ocean really knocked out some great movie based games on the C64. Whizball on the Amiga was never going to live up to the C64 version, I don't think anything could. This version looks nice but the controls feel a little bit off and ultimately it's just a bit of a lazy port. The Commodore 64 version is an absolute corker of a game that C64 fans love for the quirky gameplay that was a shoot 'em up with a difference. I personally never really played this back in the day but have in the latter years and I agree this game is great for the humble C64. Ok that's it for me, let me know in the comments below if you have any games that you think were better on the C64 and remember to hit that like button and subscribe if you like my stuff. Till next time, this is OSG, signing out.